So are we really, really focusing on making music income or are we just chasing trends because someone else says they made a lot of money with this one thing? Well, welcome to the Make Music Income podcast, episode 66. And, you know, I think sometimes we get blinders on trying to make a music income where we see someone else making music income. We think, oh, they're making music. Uh, Pond5 just paid somebody 200 bucks for AI data sets. Well, I better, I don't even know what that means, but I better get in Pond5 right now and get into stock music, you know. A rapper might say, uh, oh man, I made, uh, I made tons of money with my TikTok channel and I made all this money. And like, okay, well, maybe I need to make TikTok videos. I better get to on that. Um, or we see uh, some guy comes on somebody's, somebody's channel and says, I made $3,000 just using logic and motion array. And uh, I did it while standing on one foot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. And then you blindfolded. think, oh, can... <laughs> blindfolded. <laughs> and then you think, oh, well, then that's what I need to do to make, to make money. And uh, we, we see another guy paying his rent with Spotify. And we think, well, I just need to figure that secret out and do that and cover my expenses with Spotify. Uh, Jesse at Sync My Music says, Sync is the way to go. And now AI is the way to go. And Daniel says, at Stock Music Licensing says, Stock Music is the way to go. Well, I have news for you, my friends. Any of these things may or may not work for you. I, I have tried, and I'm trying all of them, and some of you have tr probably tried all of them, but one thing that I know and I have been guilty of over and over, and maybe you have too, is focusing too much on some trend or something that I hear somebody else is making money with. I, I see it with Steve sometimes. I see it with, with other people that come on our channel and I think, ah, oh, I gotta do that thing. Well, I'm not telling you not to do that thing, but I am wanting to talk today about why we need to be careful with each of these things and why they may work for for us and why they may not and why we may still, as I am want to say, Steve, let's do them all. So uh, without any further ado, let me bring in my, my friend and partner here on the podcast and someone who does many things and never chases trends because he's way <laughs> too cool for that. He, he makes the trends. He doesn't set the trends. Mr. Stevie B. What's going on, man? Hello, everybody. I'm, uh, I'm very skeptical of trends. This is why I, I, t I tend not to chase them. Um, maybe sometimes I'm missing out. I don't know. Um, well, actually, speaking of trends... Big news in my life this week was picking up these trendy uh, uh, Apple. You're such a trend chaser. Apple AirPod Max what a, headphones. What a trend chaser. Very man. trendy. Uh, <laughs> man, you know what? I, <laughs> I got to say, man, they are they are something else. These headphones, they are something else. I uh, the, the noise cancellation technology on them is just so crazy, and there's the AI in them is awesome. Yeah, the AI is a, is amazing, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I've been listening to music more, you know, just enjoying it. Uh, with the, they, they're quite they're quite spectacular. I try, the the one issue I'm having that I didn't foresee is that um, <clears throat> when you wear them they're like you can't really produce with them in terms of like writing yeah. like because there's a, yeah. a bit of a delay um so it's that's uh, something i didn't foresee but i've been doing mixing i'd be trying to mix with them which is which is fine but if you're playing a midi keyboard there's a bit of a delay because it's I, it's wireless i have some sony's that are um that have complete noise cancellation and it's hard to work in them you um, think so it feels unnatural a little bit sometimes especially playing for sure but um just even listening doesn't sound natural to me. As a matter of fact, I'm considering open back headphones just to test that and see um, maybe the Sennheiser, uh, these are Sennheisers and maybe moving to Sennheiser open back just to get a little bit more, um, you know, room feel. Of, yeah, uh, I hear, I, I, I know what you mean. I feel like I was, I was worried I was going to feel the same way when I got them in turn, but like, I actually kind of like the immersive feeling of them. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a bit uncomfortable, uh, with the noise cancellation at first, but I, th I got used to it very quickly and I just, you I can feel turn like that I can, off, though, can't you? Yeah, you can. Yeah, exactly. But I feel like I can focus better with the, without the external noises. There's quite a bit of it here. Unfortunately, there's sirens and traffic noise all the time. Um, anyway, they're pretty cool. 
um, something to uh, to dig in a little deeper with uh, you know Dolby Atmos um, uh, mixing and all that kind of stuff. So that's mm-hmm. coming around the bend. Um, otherwise, uh, oh yeah, the uh, the Cubase uh, channel released my yeah. lo-fi hip hop one of first video of four uh, today, I think, or last or yesterday. Uh, one of the academy members um, gave me a heads up on that, and uh, nice. I was <laughs> for some reason was like bracing for like negative comments. And this, they're all so positive and nice. It it just it, you know it was a challenge to put it out there, but. Um, a part of me was like, I, f- I feel like I, maybe I did something wrong, like, or maybe I did something improperly, and someone was going to call me out on it or something. But uh, no, it was it's it's all good, and uh, I, I got a, uh, another call with the Keybase team uh, coming up sh- shortly to do another series. So I'm excited about that. It all worked out well, and um, people seem to be enjoying it on on YouTube. So that's cool. And uh, yeah, meanwhile, just man, just writing a ton of music. I, I worked double time this whole last week because I got to go out of town for for a few days um, this week, uh, writing dramedy tracks, indie folk tracks, uh, solo piano stuff for uh, for the sync libraries I'm working with, um, orchestral stuff as well, and then just wrapping up some Artlist Originals uh, tunes. And yeah, just hustling, man, uh, trying to get it all done. And um, and yeah, that's about it for me. What about you? Um, you know, it's funny you should talk about Cubase. I just did a some over the weekend. I did quite a bit of uh, polling of people on what DAW they use. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna do a little DAW video. I put a little presentation together, and a new ebook, by the way, is coming out about you know just giving people links to all the DAWs. Um, and I found out a couple of interesting things about DAWs that'll be in the video, especially number one, you can get a free version of every single one almost um, except for logic well you can get garage you band i guess that's the kind of yeah, or you not, get garage band yeah yeah but you still have to garage have band's your free version yeah yeah but um yeah all the all of them have free versions some stay free or can stay free if you want them to but um but the the interesting thing was that uh, uh logic w- came in first in the polling Did it? this is a very unscientific poll but uh, I think I'm going to do a live maybe tomorrow. Well, you had quite a today, few, but... you, quite a few responses, didn't you? Oh yeah, I had 181 responses on the first poll. Yeah, and and that one, you know, you can only put so many things on YouTube, and then the second one had 80 something uh, responses outside of the first four things. And so, as best I can figure it out, Logic came in first, Ableton came in second, and Cubase came in third. Cubase like came on to come on third oh, okay. um, and I'll, I'll go through them all in what order they came in um, and I think surprisingly the number four one is the real surprise so watch that video to see the number four one I just I never thought it would come in fourth but so logic um, Ableton Cubase and mystery number four yeah well I mean I, I there's nine that I did okay and uh, I go through them uh, spoiler alert Pro Tools is almost at the bottom yeah but, uh, not surprised yeah. Uh, I'm not either because most of the people who follow my channel are likely composers and that's Pro right. Tools is not the software you want to be composing in. Yeah, yeah. Um, but <clears throat> anyway, uh, besides that, that'll be coming out uh, in the next day and I've got an ebook that uh, kind of goes along with that that's going to be kind of my new my new free ebook just that has a lot of links on free stuff and inexpensive things, you know, to get started with DAWs and software instruments and stuff like that. The usual suspects, but still people ask me about that all the time. I have one video I did two years ago that has a bunch of free stuff in it, but people always want to know. And the free stuff really hasn't changed, but I think everybody has to kind of look through all the DAWs and see which one they like the best and try them all. And uh, Mm -hmm. every one of them is able to download for free so cool anyway i'll probably that'll probably come out tomorrow which will be by the time this thing comes out last wednesday but um anyway so working on that and then um also got a really good start on my first course this weekend not really shooting the video yet but doing the powerpoints which you know i i I don't know if you do them that way but i'm i'm kind of doing a powerpoint of the of the thing first off of my outline and then i'll shoot so I'll shoot myself like playing, talking with the outline or whatever, or with the PowerPoint. Yeah, anyway. cool. Yeah. So that, I got a couple of first modules done uh, in the PowerPoints. And so just got to do the rest now. Um, 
but that's going to be that's going to be cool. Uh, finally, got two vocals done for these country uh, songs I'm doing for one library. Uh, I had written them a month or two ago, but I was just trying to find a vocalist, and I didn't have any money, and I couldn't find any partners. And as it turns out, the library partnered with me, and so we got that done. Nice. And uh, and and so I've got to get those done after this, and off to the library stems and and everything. Uh, off to the library to get a mix them. Um, and then they also want some three other songs, uh, kind of tropical rock type stuff that I'm doing for them. And uh, so that's next. I got I do have one partner on that. Um, then a bunch of stuff. Another vocal just came in last week for another song. That's not really, uh, uh, it's part of this like advertising type of record or album that I'm putting together. Mm -hmm. where we're, we've got three or four songs that are, we're kind of advertising based really will do great in car commercials or makeup commercials or things like that. So I hope to sell that. Um, I got four more songs. Uh, I don't know if we talked about this last week, but I got four more songs accepted to the newest library that I'm part of. And, uh, these are some versions of amazing grace that I, uh, have been working on and they like the idea, but they only want to start with four songs and see how people react before they take more of them. Cause I have more of them. Um, I also got contacted, I think I may have mentioned this last week, I can't remember, by uh, a company that wants me to do a review for their, uh, it's a distributor that I've never worked with before. I've heard of some of my clients having them, so I'm not going dis to disclose that just yet be until I experience what it's like to actually release something through them. And I've done the release, I've done the, you know, enter part, and now I'm waiting for it to be released and see how it comes out. Is works. that is that like an affiliate thing, or will they give you a commission or something like it that? It is. It's a sponsored video. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, so that's completely out of left field. I, they're just one of those things that just came in, and they said, we'd like you to review this. And I'm like, okay. So we'll see how that goes. Cool. Um, let's see. Uh, lots of client stuff to do. I'm just looking at my to-do list here. Um, and uh, I've kind of been lax on putting new music, making new music myself uh, with all this other stuff. Um, I've got a bunch up. Actually, that's not true. I'm, I finished one and mixed it the other this weekend. And uh, I spent a lot of time at Disney this weekend, <laughs> like Friday all day over at two different parks and then Sunday all day at Magic Kingdom. And then I've just been uh, I've just been vacating and so uh, <laughs> riding rides and rode the new Tron ride and all oh, nice. of stuff the new Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy ride it's kind of like it's kind of like roller skate dancing on a roller coaster. It's what it feels like, but um, yeah, I spent a lot of time doing that. So I, and I think you got to sometimes you just got to get away and take time off work. And even when music is your work, you got to take time off. And I kind of did so. Um, but I Sunday I spent time finishing a song that I've been working on for a while, and uh, it's sitting there ready. I just got to I've made all the things to put on Motion Ray. Pod five, all that stuff. I just haven't done it yet. I'm probably going to go through my entire checklist. You know, I have that free checklist on how to release a song. I'm going to go through the entire. Go ahead and release it to DistroKid, or, or I should say, out to, you know, Spotify and all those places. Mm -hmm. Market it and put it out to, uh, you know, Content ID and all the places. Every place that non-exclusive stuff goes, and do that. And that's that's what I'll be doing. Other than that, uh, which is enough. <laughs> And working, uh, teaching full time, and covering everybody's class right now. That's all that's going on, Steve. Not much. <laughs> yeah, it's not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds a pretty slack, slack week going on over there. <laughs> well, you know why I'm able to get so many things done. Watch this transition, because Steve, I'm not chasing trends all the time. <laughs> Actually, uh, maybe some of those are. Um, but um, I want to talk today uh, about the reason why it's so easy for us to hear about the coolest, newest thing. And over the past two weeks, it's all been about AI and AI this and AI that. And we'll <clears throat> talk about that in a minute. That's not what this podcast is about. This podcast is more about you and us and how we deal with all of these things that all ask for our time, YouTube included. I didn't even put YouTube in here, but I should. Um, all the things that we see people doing. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put that in right now because um, as YouTubers, you know, we see other people doing things and go, oh, I should do that on my channel, you know, and, uh, I, and, and that could go, I'll just say social media because that could 
be all social media. But we just see people doing things. They're making money with their music in a certain way, and we want to make music in a certain way. And one of those that we talked about last week, so we don't need to talk about it that much now, is stock music licensing. And uh, if you watch Steve's channel, you, me, the rest of the world has been tempted to jump on this trend, uh, especially jumping on the trend of Motion Array because not only have we seen Steve has success there, I've done a video about having success there back two years ago when I was actually having success there. And Steve did last year. Now, Alex, who was on your show recently, we've seen this happen. We've seen stock music become this, this, this trend of people making lots of money and we like, we need to do that. And I know people who've had those blinders on for stock for a year or two years and I think I did back in 2021. I really focused on a lot, even though I had a good focus on sync as well. But I thought, man, this is going to be a good side income. And I got everybody's making money on this. I got to make money on it. Mm. And maybe I focused too hard and too long on it. And last year, I kind of walked away from that a little bit. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, man. I just Mr. Think, Trendsetter. Oh, I'm thinking back to when, uh, <laughs> like, when I started with stock music, there wasn't like a lot of people on YouTube saying that you could make a, uh, money with stock music. It was mostly uh, people saying, talking about sync licensing, like more like traditional working with TV uh, production libraries and kind mm -hmm. of that kind of stuff. It was basically Daniel Carazella is talking about stock music licensing, um, yeah. you know, and, and um, you know, he was saying he was doing pretty good. And I, I was... I was skeptical. I actually didn't find Daniel's channel until I was, I don't know if I told you this, I was backstage at a show one time. It was like, this is years ago. And um, I was doing a gig uh, with this with this band and they had hired a saxophonist and uh, this, this guy, Eli, is super cool, nice guy. And uh, he was telling me that, you know, he'd done some film scoring and some, and some music licensing. And um, he mentioned that he was making like $2,000 a month off of uh off of audio jungle and i was like really and i it's one of those things where if someone had said it on youtube or something like that i'd be skeptical i'm always skeptical you know <laughs> of of these kinds of claims but he wasn't lying you know he told me he's just like he's like you know he's, he's like i've put a couple of orchestra like orchestral stuff up there it's, it's like making two thousand dollars us a month and i was like that's crazy i couldn't believe it um so I, that's what actually kind of spurred me to go and, and do some research on, I, that, and that's why I started with Audio Jungle. Is, you know, it was one of those things where it's like, okay, well, you know, if he's doing it, let me see what's on there and let me see if uh, I can make some dough. And then through researching Audio Jungle, I found Daniel's channel and, you know, he was talking about how he was making uh, pretty much a full-time income there as well. And... I guess it seems so unrealistic. Of chasing the trend, I, I at, was some, at one point. Yeah, I was. I was guilty of it. You know, it, it, like totally. And and I think I was very, very skeptical, even up to the point after putting my first tracks up there. Like I was like, ah, this isn't going to make any money. This is crazy. Um, and it did. It sold like a license right away, right? And so that kind of yeah. just was like it was a real eye opening kind of like, oh, okay, this is actually a thing. Like you know, didn't realize it, um, but. Yeah, you know, in general, I'm very, um, you know, people make kind of outlandish or some pretty wild claims on, on YouTube. And I'm always kind of like, well, I don't know about that. But the truth is, is that if you really do your research and you actually apply yourself and look into these things, then uh, there is a lot of opportunity. I think that <clears throat> the problem is that people are looking for uh, for quick turnarounds and they maybe don't do their due diligence when it comes to like actually researching uh, the ins and outs. But uh, of course, when we hear about it online, especially on YouTube, it's kind of like glossed over, right? It's like, yeah, you can do this. And, and we all do that. Yeah. Um, but the, the truth is, is that there's a lot more to it, obviously, and you got to kind of dig into it a bit. And if you, if you are, haven't heard, we, we did do a kind of a deep dive into where stock is in 2023 last week, or at least where it, where it is with us, what we're hearing from other people in mm -hmm. 2023. So go back and check that one out. And we don't want to belabor stock again, all podcast. No. But I, I <clears throat> did the same thing. You know, I was really focused on sync licensing. And then I kind of stumbled on to Daniel's channel, I think, or other, uh, maybe yours, and saw different people making some money with this. And 
And especially uh, when once I got into Motion Array and started seeing that daily money back in the day when it was, I mean, you still kind of see that, but it was all based on dollars per day rather than downloads almost back in when I started it. And the minute I got a few things in there and suddenly I'd make $2, $5, $10, and it was just adding up by the hour. And I was thinking, this is unbelievable. I've got to really put more into all this. And so, and then of course that was Daniel saying, you gotta be in every library. You gotta put everything in there. You gotta do all this kind of stuff. And you were you were kind of trying out different things too. And I was following you. and. And so, yeah, I, I chased that trend, baby, and I jumped right on it. And all of 2021 was just developing corporate music and mm -hmm. any of my old music I could pull out and anything I could do. And I just, I, I jumped one, both feet in. And uh, I did okay. I averaged four or $500 a month that year and uh, in just in stock. And, and while that's still only, you know, 10% uh, or, or, or less of, the income that I need to survive, it was still something, right? It was car Definitely. payment. Definitely you know? something. And I was yeah. like, dang, that's pretty good for just a bunch of stuff I have laying around or making a song that's two minutes long. Now, uh, I still made what I wanted to make. And so let me just kind of say this about this whole subject. And I, I didn't need to say it up front, and I don't need to say it at the end, but <clears throat> I think the the my my feeling on this is that we have to pay attention to trends. We can't ignore them. Yeah. We can't ignore AI. We can't ignore sync licensing or Spotify. These are huge things that exist that are we're able to make music income on, and I'm not ignoring them. I'm not even ignoring stock, really. But I think um, the the real true focus that we have to have is we have to focus on making sure that we are making the music that we feel like we have to make and we need to make and then fitting it into all of these trends. Uh, I think one of the, everybody's scared about AI, but only because they're afraid they're not good enough. They're afraid that AI is gonna be better than us. And I think if you get nothing else out of this episode that you get, you, you are valuable in, unto yourself and um, all, you will find the things that work for you. You know, I don't think gaming music is going to work for me. I don't think beat making and beat selling is going to work for me personally. It will for other people, you know? Yeah, well, I think I think that it's like, I, I think a lot of people hear about gaming music or they hear about stock or sync licensing and they're like, oh, cool, I have a couple of tracks kicking around my hard drive that I could throw onto mm -hmm. game dev market, but like they, they haven't done uh, enough research in order to come to the, the conclusion that you know maybe their particular set of tracks or music isn't going to work for that market and then you're left with the realization that you actually have to kind of write for that market which is work you know it's not yeah. easy you can't yeah. just throw yeah. your your old stuff onto any old marketplace without understanding what it is that people are are looking for uh, so that's really one one of the big um, you know obstacles that that people find um, in their in their research is like, look, you got to write for for this library. You got to write for game dev market if you're going to sell yeah. game music. You know, so yeah. same with Motion Array or same with stock music. You know, the people that we know who are making a lot in it, and you are one of those people who have made good money in it. It's because you focused on what Motion Array was looking for, mm -hmm. and you made the very thing they were looking for. Versus me, who just puts whatever I make in there. I don't focus on what they're doing. I focus on what I'm doing. Now, I think that's a healthy way. Well, you adjust things. your expectations based on on that yeah. approach. You know, yeah. if you go in thinking that you're going to make thousands of dollars, like you know, um, yeah. then you're going to be disappointed, right? Unless unless you adjust the way you're writing. I, I've tried that in almost everything that I've done, and then I I go I I sit back and go, okay, what I thought they wanted is not coming out of me the way they want it. And so I'm just gonna do me. And and I think you eventually get to that thing. Now, some there are people like you and Lester and stuff who create music that's kind of what you wanna make, but it's also what they're looking for. And we've seen that in the music business for all of the music business. You know, there are people that are, the music business is looking for and people who aren't, even though they try to be like the people they're looking for. So mm -hmm. that's just gonna be a natural type of type of thing. So. Let's move on here. Um, obviously, the next one and something we talk about a lot of this is sync licensing, and sync is obviously um, something that we're both into and focused on. And most people who listen to this or watch this are have some interest in it. I still think it's a, a worthy pursuit. I think um, this has been very trendy. 
people have been thinking for a long time that this is the next big thing. And I still think it is is a, a, a big thing. I wonder if sometimes it's not being blown out of proportion a little bit. And we see all of these people, Jesse included, um, who who have made money with sync yet still have big other incomes that they do. Don't know if they have to do it, but I see people who sell $2,000 courses <clears throat> in how to do sync and how to sell stuff to this person or music supervisors or libraries or whatever. And yet uh, they're having to do that to survive versus supposedly all the sync money that they're making with sync licensing. It's kind of the dirty little secret behind sync licensing people, including me. You know, I had talked about it on this channel, but I'm not making that much money on it. I'm just I, I'm making I'm, I'm making strides towards making some money on it, but not anywhere what I need to survive with it. And I, I'm not even sure if it's even going to be that. That's another <laughs> that's another video actually coming up. I think the kind of other side of sync that people need to be thinking about, you know? Well, yeah. I mean, I'm starting to get placements now, but I still haven't, I'm not going to get paid yeah. for them for like quite a while. Yeah. It's such yeah. a process, man. You know, I think it's, a, it's trendy, I suppose. Like the topic is, is, um, is out there and people know about it, but it's not as, uh, it's not kind of flashy as some of the other sort of trends that we'll maybe we'll get to talk about here on the podcast for the reason that it's not a it's such a slow turnaround um you see a lot well, of it's like still trendy though i mean to think you can just put your money your music and tv shows and then get paid while you just sit around in a similar way that stock it's a very still a passive income to some extent in the end yeah well you hear you know of, it's very trendy. You, know, you hear taxi music talking about like how like some of their their members are making six figures in, in sync now, and they put they put in the time and um, and that makes it kind of like you know uh, a glamorous subject on online, I guess. And people love the idea of making a lot of passive income through their music. But um, I think pe I'd people like are, that are, are quickly dismayed by by it when they realize that it's like a two to three year investment at least um, to even like actually start making any kind of uh, Dude, significant money. It took me five years. Yeah, it's a, and it's I was crazy. using all pros. <laughs> yeah, like two two years if you're lucky, you will start getting yeah. some, like you know you actually have to. There's there's just well, so many hurdles to jump through with sync, yeah. um, and I think I think it's like yeah, it's a cool subject, it's a trendy subject, but it's also um, requires an incredible amount of patience and dedication. And, uh, I think people are, especially young people these days are looking for like, let's make money now. Like, how do I make money quickly and effectively? You know, like, I well, and that's the problem. People walk into my school and they go, I, the first day I ask them, what do you want to do in the music business? And they like, the first thing a lot of them say is be a star, you know, which is just a goofy thing to say. I mean, that's like saying, I want to be an astronaut, you know, and never doing any kind of training towards being an astronaut. But um, I want to just be a millionaire and travel the world singing my raps. And I'm like, oh, that's so it, it, it hurts my heart, you know, that the truth is, and you know this and I know this and a lot of anybody else who's making their full income off music knows. And this is what my whole course is about. <clears throat> you have to do everything. There's nobody I know making money doing one thing. Okay, Lester. But the only other person, I don't know really anybody, and I bet he does, he's cr really focused on, on doing that, and you gotta get that going. But I don't know many people who nowadays, in 2023, are making all of their money on one thing, only one thing that mm -hmm. they do repeatedly. It's not like session players who are making all their money making they've got to produce now they've got to write they've got to do other gigs they've got to do live things they've got to do all sorts of stuff you and i there's even if we took our best thing that pays us the most of all the things that wouldn't be enough to pay for us to we couldn't probably make that if if we tried really really hard i don't know if we could even make that our only income you know what i mean that's why i think sync stock all of these things we're going to talk about they have to be done together or some some combination of them i think so i think so i mean especially if you're at a point where your productions are 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 pretty are pretty good 
then yeah. you know with with stock at least in the royalty free market you could make money very quickly um this is definitely you know something that you could do you can get if you could take payouts um you could do you know buy, buyouts if you want mm -hmm. um to to make money very very quickly i mean you're gonna need some kind of <laughs> you're gonna need some kind of income source to get you through yeah. two to five years while you while you build up your your placement placements with yeah. sync so that's just the way it is yeah so again very trendy easy to watch a seminar or a webinar or a video and hear somebody talking about oh i make six figures on sync and think oh cool i'll just try that and put our blinders on and only pursue that for five years and then at the end of five years go oh i'm just this is going to be a long haul it's still going to take me another five years to to build this up mm -hmm. and uh yeah guess what anything is going to be like that um so you got to be careful not to jump on that trend if you're if that's not your only focus and i just don't think any of these really need to be your only focus i think all of these can be some combination of focus because especially the difference between sync and stock sometimes is very slight what you could put on one and what you would put on the other and i have that i i kind of delineate what's going to be what and content id pretty much decides that because once you decide you're going to put in content id it's pretty much non-exclusive you can't done. really do anything yeah pretty yeah. much yeah so another thing that's happening right now we've been talking about it you've been hearing it on all the uh, youtubes lately every single youtuber i know that's in music has touched on this at least once and a, a prominent one has even changed his whole channel to talk about this almost exclusively so it talk about a trend that people are jumping on and that is ai um, not just talking about it but using it um uh, figuring out ways to to either outsmart it or work with it one or the other join the robots or fight against them um and you know this is another one that i think we we're just going to touch on here because not something that we need to be that concerned about especially if you're talking what i was talking about earlier which is the human element being you there's nobody who can replace you there's nobody who can replace the unique identifiable person that you are that god made you the way god made you the way you know you exist in this world nobody else is you and if you pursue music that way i think you'll be happier in the long run i agree with in you <clears throat> i agree with you i i think there's i see a lot of personal finance type you know youtube channels talking about how to like use chat gpt and, and ai to kind of create like automated content and stuff like that and like you know hustle uh, ad rev and uh, with and, you know there's a lot of like like make a thousand dollars a day doing this with uh, with chat gpt yeah, well, yeah. um it's obviously a ex, you know extremely relevant and uh, and trendy topic right now don't mm -hmm. really see how it applies to what i'm doing just yet like it's i don't i'm not really using ai to help me um other than maybe um if you consider like ozone uh, you know mastering like some some of that is i suppose is like kind of ai um i'm using chat gpt a little bit to help me with uh with, like format my scripts a bit better it's very useful for that um and uh you know otherwise like yeah i mean i'm just kind of doing things the same old way in my daw nothing's really changed yeah. there but i do suspect that in the years ahead that you know the daws themselves are going to incorporate some of this technology and i'll be the first to talk about it on youtube i'm happy to talk about it but um yeah in terms of chatting about it and monetizing the discussion on youtube i think for for jesse it it, it you know sure makes sense uh but i think ultimately where i'm at with it on a kind of a more spiritual level is that uh you know i i'm i'm here to express my 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 personality and my humanity through through my music and i don't really see um uh that changing anytime soon because i think that's what helps me kind of cut through the noise and and, and uh, stand out in the crowd so i'm just going to kind of <clears throat> cult keep cultivating that through my music and, and trying to try to be as original as I can. And uh, I don't really see AI helping me with that any, anytime soon, but uh, you know, you never know. <laughs> yeah. You watching this or listening to this, you are a person that's unique because of your experience, because of your education, because of your, your musical uh, family or background or whatever, and the music you've made that is what's going to separate you and and that's why all of these things 
Um, they're all stock or sync or AI or any of these things don't really matter in the end. And any trend that comes along, you don't have to jump on it because you have what you are and you can be what you are. Uh, the next category I want to jump to is Spotify and, and, and streaming in general. You know, we hear a lot of people all the time and there are channels like Andrew and Tom who just really focus on uh, experimenting with these, um, these ways to do Facebook ads to get people over to Spotify. And I'm, I'm a person who jumps on that every time, every now and then. I just did uh, put an album out and kind of did a little bit of that. I'm going to be talking about it on a live on Friday, I think. And um, I'm going to be talking about the, how that experiment went and what I saw in, in the stats. But it's, it's an easy hole to fall into, and especially when we see someone like Dan Barracuda or someone like that making their entire rent from Spotify, we think, oh, well, that's where I need to focus. And I see Andrew and Tom, and they're, they're putting money into these ads, and I just need to focus that. I just need to get mm -hmm. my stuff out on Spotify. To be honest with you, I'm a little stuck on that this, this year. It's not because it's a trend, but just because I'm, I'm really, this is my year of Spotify a little bit. I'm putting 100, my goal is 100 songs out on Spotify this year. And so I am really focused on that probably more for legacy sake than, than trend chasing. But um, I think people can get all caught up in this, get caught up in the streams and get caught up in saying, oh man, so-and-so is really killing on Spotify. And in order to get a million streams, all I got to do is uh, make $5,000, I get a million streams or this many dollars. And again, one of those easy things to get blinders on about because someone else is doing good in it. And we got to be careful with that, I think. Yeah, well, I, I'm in the same boat. I'm, I'm putting out a lot of music on Spotify this year and uh, I'm learning. You're, a, you're just tracing, chasing my trend. I'm just chasing your, your, <laughs> just doing whatever you're doing. Just copying <laughs> you. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get to 100. A, says the man who made a YouTube channel after he watched your two YouTube channels. So anyway, <laughs> you know what I think? I think it, it, what you were trying to describe earlier is like, um, it, okay, well, a real the sort of trendy topic that a lot of people on 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 YouTube uh, that talk about Spotify will discuss is like getting those editorial uh, placements. Uh, yeah. The thing is, is it the getting those placements doesn't help really build your your actual uh, you know following and artist profile. Like you can get like a lot of streams in a short period of time, and like you see this huge spike in your monthly listeners, but um, it's not it's not really going to help you in terms of longevity. You know, it's not going to help you in terms of like, uh, like actually building like a grassroots fan base for, for your music. So it, it, it's a trendy topic. People are always chasing those placements. Um, and like, you know, all the power to Dan for, for getting on those, um, on those placements. And I'm sure at some, to some level, it does obviously help his, his artist artistic profile. Um, but they're kind of fickle, those, those lit, those monthly listeners, what you really want to do is build a grassroots solid fan base, people who really, yeah. um, love you as an artist and are there to support you and are going to, um, you know, whatever, buy your merch, spin your <laughs> records when they, when they get released every time. Um, that's what really counts is having those, those, those followers. And the playlist isn't the only trend that is gonna is is on Spotify now. They have the marquee thing where you can do ads right. straight right. to the Spotify listeners. They have two or three other things they're introducing now um, that people are talking about. And that again, we just get caught up in these things. Oh man, I got to do a a little video that goes with my song on Spotify, and we can spend a night or a week working on this little video for that. And uh, I'm telling you, it, it it can get to all of us. Um, and speaking of videos, little vertical videos, the next one is TikTok, which obviously can be, you know, something that people get caught up in. And you can include shorts into this. You can include Facebook Reels. But thinking that TikTok, <clears throat> Facebook Reels, and shorts are going to make you money and everybody else is doing it now, I need to jump into this. And you hear, I hear like people I trust on Spotify, on uh, on YouTube all the time saying, you need to jump into shorts. It's the time. It's, you know, it's like, it's, it sounds like the gold rush, you know, it's, it's all about shorts. Now you better make shorts. If you don't make shorts, you're going to really miss out on what's happening with the, with the ecosystem on YouTube and all this kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. TikTok too. I get caught up in that noise too. And I often wonder if I'm like, just not making enough short content. Um, I don't think you have to. You certainly don't have to. I know lots of I follow lots of YouTubers uh, that that don't do it at all, and they do great. Um, 
I don't know. I mean, tick, TikTok is one of those things where, like, I, I hear people, like, you know, say that they're legitimately monetizing TikTok and doing great there. Um, I mean, aren't they on the precipice of, like, banning it in the United yeah. States? Well, but like, like I said, and I should probably just make this TikTok and just short video in, in, in general, not just TikTok. It's yeah, kind of like yeah. saying Spotify, when we meet all DSPs, but Spotify is kind of the ringleader. But in this case, TikTok and shorts and reels, because reels is what they call them on Facebook and on Instagram. And so you have this, this short media vertical, short vi vertical video phenomenon that's going on right now. And, <clears throat> and almost everybody listening to this has thought at one point, I should make a short of me dancing. <laughs> well, that's where I, I should do a dance. That'll get me a lot of views, and then we'll hear my music. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I'm not about to start dancing. I'm waiting for that one, Steve. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> yeah, I'd like, I'd like to hear. I'd like to see that one. Yeah. <laughs> I should. I Just should dance. Just to be silly. Um, <laughs> but I, again, I've done two it, shorts this year. <laughs> I mean, it's more. It's better than one. I did one so far. I think. <laughs> um, I, and I don't mind doing them, but I, I don't know. Anyway, we could do a whole a whole show on that. I think we have, but um, yeah. Again, this is one of those things you can get caught up doing it because everybody else is doing it. It's a trend, and no more thing. Nothing is trendier than the things that come out on these things now. It's all about trends. It's only about trends, and uh, so not not to say you shouldn't do them. Maybe you should. Maybe they should be. You know, most people who who I trust that talk about these talk about this should be used in in conjunction cooperation with, with your yeah. longer form videos and your live videos and your this kind of you know whatever so certainly something that you can look into um the next one is deals and i mean record deals i mean publishing deals we've talked about the things that we chase sometimes i don't think as many people are chasing these as these days because we live in a different world we don't live in a in a world where the gates are still so high that we can't climb them anymore we can pretty much do what everybody who has a record deal is doing, uh, all the tools are kind of available to us. So uh, it's not something we need to be chasing, but I know some people still are, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think if you get it, I mean, a good record deal is, uh, is, is something to chase. I, uh, <clears throat> I just think that there's so many tools for, you know, to do it, to build your own fan base and, and, to, and to build a, and make a comfortable, uh, income for for yourself as an independent artist creator whatever you want to call yourself um that it seems like to me that you know it's not really something worth chasing it's something that'll come to you in time as you as you build up your profile if if it, if it deals you know like the labels are just going to they're, they're going to find you if you have a large enough profile and, the, and maybe the deal will be good maybe it won't but um i think it's one of those things where it's like at this point in time, we're expected to kind of like uh, build up this the build up the, our our profile on our own, and then yeah. you know, and then people start knocking at your door eventually if you become uh, you know big enough or yeah, if you're making popular money. enough. Yeah, exactly. If you're, if you're making money, people start come knocking at your door. <laughs> That's how it goes. Okay, so there's lots we could talk about here. Many different trends we are chasing all the time instead of making music income. But the truth is, all of these things we can be making music income now and not just chasing each one of these things, all of them. You should probably have your foot in everything. I don't know. What do you think, Steve? Yeah, I, t yes, I agree to some extent. Um, I think it's like th throw as much as, of yourself out there as you can. Uh, and see what lands, um, but at some point you're going to need to focus in on the things that are are, are actually doing something. Um, you don't want to spread yourself thin, and this is a balancing act that we've talked about so many times on the podcast. The difference between doing too many things and then like focusing in on on the stuff that really matters. Uh, but you do want to be somewhat skeptical about some of the claims that you hear out there. I, I know that I certainly am. Uh, but you also don't want to write anything off completely until you've kind of like done some research and like and, and checked it out a bit further. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we've done a, a whole podcast on chasing rainbows and, and getting caught up and distracted by things that are probably not go going to work. But I think it just it, it's a matter of kind of just giving it a shot, giving it a shot, seeing what's, what happens and 
um, and and taking it one day at a time, I guess, you know, but uh, but there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of shiny objects out there trying to, to grab our attention. We got to be really careful about, um, about, you know, how we're dividing our time. And all of these things you can do, and, and you just have to find the thing that works for you, and then you have to double down on those things that things actually do make music income, then follow those. And as the trends come along, maybe you try them, but our goal here is to make music income, to make income that supports our families and enriches us, and we have fun making music for, and that's the goal. So Absolutely. All right, everybody, thank you so much. I hope you have a good week. We will talk to you next time. See you next week. See you. Bye-bye.